Tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroad. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. <laughs> Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're visiting two mythical scenes tonight for a singing love story. For when you're in love, the world is a singing world, and music is in starlight and sunset. Music is everywhere. Many times I had sat in the stalls to see the lovely silver dancing and singing the leading role in the colorful operetta of the Gypsy Princess. But I knew I could watch and listen to her every night of my life, especially the grand finale. Your kindness to me. 
I rarely make the curtain speak, but as you know, this is our closing night. We have created a little world of our own right here on the stage, the world of an operetta. But even magic like this must come to an end, and tomorrow I leave for America. But my thoughts, my affections, I leave here, where I've been so very, very happy. Bless you all. Yes, come in. Uh, uh, Ronald, uh, your, your Highness, you shouldn't come here to my dressing room. Now, please, Silver. Won't you think of me as just an ordinary man like, well, like all your other admirers? Ronald, a prince is not an ordinary man. I'm in love with a princess, a gypsy princess. No, you're in love with the enchantment of the theater. Now, Silver, if you think I'm acting like a stage truck college boy, then I'll show you. Why, I'll, I'll flirt and make love to every lady of the court. With lads who come from college, we've read the book of knowledge. Except perhaps its most absorbing thing. It's most absorbing thing. Romantic education begins with gravitation. Toward the lovely sirens of the lovely sirens of the day. In years of indiscretion, we have the same obsession. And frequently we get the craze and you the craze and you the craze and you. The glamour that transcends the charm of other ladies. Friends, first of all, this limelight blends enchantment to the view. But when we see them closer and hear them murmur, oh, sir, you're very kind, and I don't mind, provided I can bring a pal or two. We succumb to the craze for the nimble call of peace. Our elders and betters had to fall. We meet them, we treat them, we change them out to die. We hurt them, we let them monopolize us. Before very long we are going rather strong, believing they honestly adore us. Pathetic, strenuous, excitable, ingenuous, engaging little ladies of the chorus. With a smart pair of bows and a nice powdered nose, and eyes that so bold and men in chorus. They rule us, they rule us, we never stand a chance. They hoax us, they coax us, but they're God bless all their dear little hearts. If they don't aspire to part, their faces and think you simply for us. Their witcheries continue us, the slender, shapely, sinuous, and tight little ladies of the chorus. But I'm not in love with the ladies of the court. I'm in love with you, Silver. Oh, please. You mustn't go to America. You're going to stay right here with me. That's not possible. Well, then I'm going to America with you. No. Oh, Silver, you, you love me. I, I know you do. If I do, it's all the more reason for my going away. There are more than footlights separating us. I'm weary of being in love with the moon. Oh, Silver. I'd give up my kingdom, anything, for my disadvantage. Don't you understand? Silver, tis you I love. Tis you I love. And you. Love is an unsparing giver, generous and brave and free. Passion is a fleeting, fond emotion, volatile as morning dew. Love is an eternal, deep emotion. Such a love is a mind sweet for you. You are all my world, beloved.
you to go to America. You forbid? By what right? By the right of a husband. We'll get married here, tonight. Well, how could we? In this country, a marriage performed before a notary is binding, if it's followed by a church ceremony within three months. We'll send for a notary right now, and he'll perform the ceremony in the state, at the theater. The theater where you are, a princess. My princess. <laughs> Signature here, Your Highness. I, Ronald, Prince of Kozanoff, do hereby most solemnly declare that I take Silver Valley to be my lawful wedded wife. And in three months, I will confirm this contract before the world and heaven. That concludes the legal ceremony. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Norris. Are you happy, Phil? Oh, I thought this case contained magic. But you've made the magic come true. Ronald, Prince Ronald. Where are you, Your Highness? Who is that? Oh, it's Lord Boniface. In here, Bonnie. You can help us celebrate. Uh, news from home, Your Highness. Your father, the king, has just officially announced your engagement to the beautiful Countess Dottie. And it, It's a formality. It, it means nothing. You're ordered to come home at once. I refuse. It's a military order. You must obey it. Oh, wait. Fine. So we'll listen to me. I will go home only long enough to straighten this thing out. Then I will return to you. Yes, I really understand. But, but, Tell me again, love me. Oh, Phil. And then say goodbye very quickly.
for the day that you and I are married. Why, Silver? What's the point of it? The marriage contract said in three months. Today was to have been my real wedding day. Then why ruin your last chance by dragging me in? Because if he thinks I'm married to you, Ronald will feel I have no claim on him. And besides, it was the only way, getting into the palace. And then there is one other reason. What reason? Because I'm a woman. And I want to see the woman who's going to take my place. That's all. You still love him very much, don't you? Yes, Bonnie. I love him very much. Their Majesties will receive you now. Thank you. Please announce Lord and uh, uh, Lady Boniface. Ah, Boniface, I always knew you would marry a girl like this. Why, you can tell her nobility from her grace, her poise, her beauty. Don't you think so, my dear Anita? Yes, Edwin. Uh, tell me, dear Lady Boniface, did you have a quiet wedding? Oh, very quiet indeed, Your Majesty. Almost silent. I have sent for the prince. Oh, no. I want him to meet you. There was a time in his young life when he associated with riffraff, the low women of the theater. I am anxious for him to see what a good match his old friend Boniface has made. His Highness, the prince. Oh, Bonnie, what shall I do now? Smile. Oh, good afternoon, Mother. Father. Ah, my old friend, Boniface. This is his new bride, Ronald. May we present our son, the Prince, Lady Boniface. Prince, Lady Boniface. What about us? Oh, you mean that play acting on the stage. <laughs> Imagine a wedding on an empty stage at one o'clock in the morning. Oh, we've often laughed about it since. Was it all just a dream? Just a dream. Oh, Silver. Let's both dream all over again. have a surprise for us, Boniface. I love surprises. Your Highness, this is not my wife. We are not married. What? what? Silver. 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 Is this the theater person that infatuated Ronald? How dare you bring her here, Boniface? Father, I... I think, my dear Edwin, it's high time you were told the truth about something. I, too, was once a theater person. Why, Mother. <laughs> what? I don't believe it. You were a countess when I married you. I was the widow of a count. But before that, I was known as one of the cuties of Cologne. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. We're the dangerous, deplorable, bewildering, adorable, delightful, dainty darlings of the forest. <laughs> Mother, that's wonderful. I often wondered why I had such fabulous lullabies as a child. Like father, like son. <laughs> father, I, I don't see how you can have any objections now. Yes, yeah, so, well... You I remove thought, uh, those objections, Edwin, or I'll shout it from the highest turret of this castle that your queen was once one of the cuties of Cologne. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 uh, well, after all, she is uh, rather beautiful and... Uh, it would be nice to have a beautiful daughter-in-law. Quite frankly, the uh, Countess Stoutley is sort of a prune. <laughs> oh, Father. 
How you happy, Sue? Oh, how can I tell you how I feel? I know. All oh, the tiny stars are singing love's sweet song. In my heart are joyfully singing songs. Come, my darling, Charming Gypsy Princess, Blanche Seabom will be back in just one moment for a much-deserved curtain call. And meanwhile, our hearty thanks to Verna Felton, Herb Butterfield, Carlton Young, and to our entire company. The Gypsy Princess, with books by Arthur Miller, lyrics by Arthur Stanley, and music by Emmerich Kalman, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroad. Marvin? In this national election year, one obligation of citizenship heads all the rest. The obligation to go to the polls on November 4th and vote. Unless you do, you cannot play your part in deciding the critical issues of our time. Everyone who votes plays an important part in helping to secure the future of America, helping to keep our freedom strong. Make sure you exercise your right and duty as a citizen on election day. Get out and vote on November 4th. Right, Marvin. Now, here again is our delightful guest, Blanche Seabock. Thank you, Gordon. And just think, I got to marry you twice this evening. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, we've had a lot of princesses on this stage, Blanche, and you, believe me, were one of the most charming. Mm. And come back real soon. I'd love to. What's on the show today next week? Well, listen. What do you think of when you hear that song? Heaven. Mm-hmm. Seven, seven. Well, you're right. That's our show for next week. A brand new musical treatment of one of the loveliest stories of all time. The great stage and screen hit, Seven, Seven. One of the stars of Tales of Hoffman, Miss Ann Ayers, will be our lovely Diane. Oh, that should be a real listening treat. Well, good night, Gordon. Good night, Blanche. All aboard. Well, friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night and our premiere performance of the musical version of 7-7, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying goodbye. The Gypsy Princess was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae appeared through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, producers of The Miracle of Fatima. Our choir was under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music was prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Until next week, this is Marvin Miller saying good night for the American Railroad. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Oh!